Imagine staring into the night sky where stars wink like distant secrets, and suddenly one of them decides to scream, not with light, but with a magnetic heartbeat that echoes across the void straight to our instruments on Earth. That's exactly what happened this summer when 3i slash ATLAS, the latest uninvited guest from another star system, didn't just pass by, it announced itself in a way that left even the sharpest minds scrambling. Professor Brian Cox, the guy who makes black holes feel like casual chat, paused mid-sentence on live TV and said this shouldn't exist, not according to everything we know, but it does. And as telescopes worldwide locked on, the questions piled up faster than the data. What if this wanderer from the stars is whispering clues about a universe that's way wilder than our textbooks allow? Stick around, because this story isn't just about a comet, it's about the moment science had to admit it might be wrong. Picture this, it's July 1st, 2025, a muggy night in Hawaii where the Atlas telescopes hum away, scanning the heavens for anything that doesn't belong. A faint streak catches the software's eye, just a few pixels sliding across the star field. Nothing fancy at first, but then the numbers hit. This thing's hauling at over 26 kilometers per second, shrugging off the sun's gravity like it's a mild suggestion. Teams in observatories from Chile to Mauna Kea crunch the orbital math overnight. Eccentricity locks in at more than six, hyperbolic, unbound, a one-way ticket through our solar system. No looping back, no family ties to our sun. This is 3i slash ATLAS, the third interstellar object we've ever nailed down, named after the survey that spotted it. For context, the first was Oumuamua in 2017, a cigar-shaped enigma that ghosted us without a tail. Then Borisov in 2019, a gassy comet that at least acted familiar. But ATLAS, Yes, it's bigger, brighter, and moving too damn fast to be local. Within hours, alerts ping global networks. Amateur astronomers dust off their scopes. Pros fire up the big guns. Images flood in, sharpening the profile. A fuzzy nucleus trailing a coma that glows unnaturally steady. The velocity isn't just high. It's interstellar escape velocity, the kind that screams, I was born light years away. By dawn, the Minor Planet Center confirms it. Designation 3I, extrasolar origin locked. Excitement ripples through Slack channels and email lists. This isn't a rock from the Oort cloud. It's a foreigner slingshotting through our neighborhood on a path that started who knows where in the galaxy's dark lanes. And as it barrels closer, peaking at perihelion in late October, everyone wonders what souvenirs did it bring from out there? But that velocity alone was just the appetizer. The real feast was in the light it threw off. As the first detailed spectra rolled in from the James Webb Space Telescope, jaws dropped in control rooms from Pasadena to Geneva. Forget the usual comet cocktail of water ice, a sprinkle of methane, maybe some cyanide for spice. 3i slash ATLAS is venting carbon dioxide like it's auditioning for a greenhouse gas horror show. Over 90% pure CO2 billowing in a relentless plume. Typical solar system comets, they top out at a third of that, scraping by on water vapor as the sun warms their frosty hides. Here the gas is clean, dominant, almost deliberate. Researchers like those at the Very Large Telescope's X-Shooter instrument double check the readings, but the lines are crisp. No heavy metals, minimal organics, just ice laced with this frozen breath from another world. Why does that matter? Our models for interstellar chemistry paint these visitors as survivors of brutal cosmic journeys, battered by radiation, stripped of volatiles. CO2 should sublimate early, not hoard like this. It's as if Atlas brewed its own atmosphere en route, defying the slow erosion of space. One spectroscopist quipped in a late night zoom, this thing's exhaling like it's got a secret lung. The implications hit hard. If comets from deep space carry this much preserved CO2, it flips scripts on how molecules travel between stars. Maybe seeding planets with carbon backbones we take for granted, or hinting at formation zones around cooler, redder suns where CO2 freezes solid. Online forums light up with what? What if threads? Could this explain life's carbon bias on Earth? But beneath the geeky thrill, unease brews. No water means no easy hydration story for potential panspermia. And that purity? It's too neat too unlike the messy blends from our own cloud. As Webb's infrared eyes peeled back layers, the outgassing rate clocked steady at levels that should fizzle near the sun. Instead, it ramps up predictably. Teams model the coma, plugging in solar flux and dust scattering. But the plume defies. Too uniform, too efficient. It's not just chemistry, it's a riddle wrapped in frozen breath. And speaking of rhythm, the heat maps would soon turn that whisper into a drumbeat.
Thermal imaging doesn't lie, and JWST's mid-infrared sensors painted a picture no one saw coming. As 3i slash ATLAS warmed under our sun's gaze, its surface didn't just thaw in fits and starts like a typical comet. No random burps of gas from uneven rotation or shadowed craters. Instead, the heat signatures pulsed, rising sharp, peaking clean, dropping right on cue. Every cycle spaced identically, holding over hours into days. A metronome in the void. Picture a comet as a lumpy potato baking in an oven. Hotspots bloom where light hits hardest, cools where it doesn't, all chaotic jazz. But A-T-L-A-S, it's scoring a symphony. Data logs from August show troughs returning within seconds of prediction. No drift from spin wobbles or orbital tweaks. Astronomers at the European Southern Observatory run simulations. Sunlight angle, albedo variations, even tidal stresses from passing planets. Nothing matches. The pattern screams internal clockwork something regulating energy release like a battery with a timer. It's as if the core is keeping time. One thermal dynamicist muttered in a conference call, early theories finger subsurface reservoirs, exotic ices that phase shift under pressure, dumping heat in bursts. But why so precise? Interstellar travel should have scrambled any delicate balance. And tying back to the CO2 flood, each pulse aligns with gas spikes. CO2 jets firing in sync, sculpting the tail into something eerily straight. Not the fan of dust we expect, but a focus stream, almost like guidance. Whispers start in private chats. Is this natural cryovolcanism on steroids or a glimpse of physics we haven't bottled in labs? The rhythm holds as Atlas closes in, defying the messy solar wind that should smear it. By mid-August, the anomaly trends on Astro Twitter with memes of Comet with a watch. But that steady beat was about to sync with something far louder, a signal that would wake sleeping instruments worldwide, and what came next would echo far beyond telescopes. Fast forward to July 15th, around 1530 UTC, when a lone technician at the Atlas site glances at a dashboard blip. Not a star flare, not solar noise. A magnetic tick, faint but insistent. Unplug cables, rerun Cal, it's back every 147 seconds, locked like a metronome. No panic yet, glitches happen. But curiosity pulls in the night shift. Logs cross-check. The pulse rides the object's visibility arc, vanishing when ATLAS dips below horizon. By 2100 hours, pings fly to intermagnet outposts. Japan's geomagnetic arrays, South Africa's quiet fields, Alaska's aurora watchers. Half an hour later, replies flood. Same cadence, same strength, phase to the second. Satellites join the chorus. Solar orbiter cruising clean of Earth's magnetic soup catches it crystal clear. No lag, no artifact. The odds of a worldwide hoax, zero. By 3.15 next morning, the principal investigator's phone buzzes her awake. Signals global, clock synced, not us. Dawn brings the deep space network online, sifting radio chatter and space weather logs. Solar flares, quiet, ionospheric burps, none. Every filter peels away earthly culprits, leaving one source, that streak from the stars. Within six hours, a bulletin blasts the International Astronomical Union. Unprecedented electromagnetic emission from an interstellar body. Magnetometers aren't built for comets. These ice balls lack the dynamo cores of planets or the charged sheaths of magnetospheres. Yet here it is, a pulse sharp as a laser, repeating without fade. Intensity, weak on human scales, but detectable across hemispheres. Melite slaws spiking in unison. Plasma physicists at MIT model it overnight. Could be the coma ionizing, electrons dancing in solar wind. But simulations spit chaos, not this TikTok. The 147 second window, prime number-ish, no harmonic tie to rotation or orbit. As September rolls in, Voyager probes even glitch faintly in response, though that's chalk to coincidence. The detection chain seals it. Multi-continent, space verified, data airtight. Forums explode. Comet Morse code? Jokes mix with sober dread. This isn't noise, it's voice. A voice that demands we listen closer, because silencing it means ignoring the stars. But when the world's top explainer tuned in, his words cut deeper than any signal. Brian Cox doesn't do hype, 
the Manchester particle physicist, with his knack for unpacking quantum weirdness over tea, got the alert mid-podcast prep in August. By then, headlines screamed alien beacon, and X-feeds churned with spaceship renders. Cox, fresh off debunking Fermi Paradox doomsayers, logs into a BBC roundtable. Live, unscripted data slides glowing behind him. A magnetic pulse from an interstellar visitor, he says, leaning in. That's not just unexpected. It's not supposed to be possible, at least not by any known physics of cometary or asteroidal bodies. The studio quiets, his tones even, but the weight lands. No wild gestures, just that steady gaze underscoring the break. Reporters press, alien tech, Cox chuckles dry. There is value in thinking about highly unlikely possibilities, of course. And it can be fun to publish a paper on it, but it is not science. He pivots to evidence. Spectra clean of alloys, no modulated waves in the pulse. Yet he doesn't dismiss the jolt. This forces us to question core assumptions in planetary science, he adds. If a small body can emit like this, our models for magnetism in the outer solar system, nay, the galaxy, need overhaul. Clips go viral. Fans flood his mentions with Cox for president of Curiosity. In a follow-up Guardian op-ed, he weaves it personal, decades chasing particles, yet this humble comet humbles him. We're glimpsing the universe's underbelly, he writes, where silence isn't empty. Critics nod. His restraint amid tabloid frenzy grounds the debate. No alarmism, just a nudge. Recalibrate. Don't rewrite blindly. But as labs race, Cox's echo lingers, a reminder that even icons admit gaps. And those gaps, they're where the real hunt begins, chasing shadows in ice that refuse to melt into theory. The brain trust mobilizes fast. Astrophysicists, plasma wonks, even geophysicists poached from earthquake duty. First stop, composition deep dive. If Atlas packs a metallic nugget, iron nickel relic from a supernova smash, it could harbor fossil magnetism, sparking under solar stress. VLT and JWST scans comb for signatures. Ferrous lines, nickel glows, zilch, just ice, CO2 frost, silicate dust, porous, non conductive the worst for fields wild guesses amp iron to one percent still orders short of pulse power dead end next spin dynamics fast rotators can churn interiors into dynamos if conductive enough light curves from ground scopes map the tumble period lags the 147 second beat by minutes no sync comets ragtag makeup layers of fluff and void can't sustain anyway they'd fizzle like a bad battery solar orbiters magnetometer adds torque no rotational kick matching strike two then the dust play coma grains zapped by uv or rays cycle charge rippling fields as they boil off caltech sims feed outgassing rates wind densities outputs a jittery mess broadband fuzz not this scalpel sharp tick each idea gets a workout peer-reviewed preprints archive dumps virtual workshops till 3 a.m nothing reproduces the strength or the unflinching rhythm by late august a nature editorial size standard mechanisms exhausted pivot time exotic lanes quantum ices lab analogs of high pressure polymorphs stable only in spaces crush might flip states leaking magnetic monopoles in bursts harvard's cryo team scales earth tests to vacuum fields tickle theory but not data or subsurface fusion flickers wild but co2 as byproduct nah the pulse laughs off constraints forcing a rethink maybe interstellar voids brew fields we ignore or atla AS hit a cosmic speed bump magnetizing en route. Frustration mounts. One modeler tweets, it's like chasing a ghost with algebra. Yet each bus sharpens the blade. Ruling out narrows the unknown. And as September deepens, with perihelion looming, the hunt intensifies. Because if nature won't cough up answers, history offers echoes worth hearing. Cosmic oddities don't drop solo. They breadcrumb through time, daring us to connect dots. Rewind to 2017, Pan Stars Flags. Oumuamua, hurtling at 87 kilometers per second, tumbling like a drunk weather vane. No tail, no gas. Yet it accelerated, defying pure gravity by a hair. Outgassing? Model strained, pressure from invisible ices maybe. Or something pushier. Debates raged. Natural or nudge? Leaving textbooks with footnotes. Then 1977, Ohio's Big Ear radio dish snags a 72 second blast at 1420 megahertz, hydrogen's hello frequency. 
Jerry Eamon circles the printout. Wow, no repeat, no source, just static's sharpest spike. Seti ears perked, then deflated. Glitch or ghost? Decades on, it taunts. Now 3i slash ATLAS joins the club. Pulse where silence ruled, rhythm where chaos reigns. Each anomaly shares DNA, interstellar flavor, rule bending behavior. A stubborn not yet explained. Historians of science chart it like fault lines. 1977's Whisper, 2017's Shove, 2025's Thump. Responses mirror too. Initial buzz, model tweaks, grudging awe. Aumuamua sparked Loeb's light sail theory, dismissed but data rich. Wow, birthed signal hunts, refining filters, a TLAS, its turbocharging comet magnetism studies, with grants flowing to dusty labs. Patterns whisper bigger, are these flukes or the galaxy's quirky norm? One astronomer notes in a review, interlopers test our parochial physics. X threads weave conspiracies. Umamua scout, Atlas reply, but data grounds it. Three points, loose line, no proof. Yet the thread pulls, each forces wider nets, sharper eyes. As Atlas nears the sun, its pulse might modulate, echoing kin or solo. Either way, these echoes remind. The stars don't mail postcards, they drop curveballs. And when the fringe starts buzzing, that's your cue, the curves veering wild. Online, the whispers turn to roars. Rumors swirl that 3i slash ATLAS isn't ice at all, but something with intent. Reports claim it's a probe, beaconing home with that 147 second wink. Fans point to the tail, not dusty fan, but a tight jet, propulsion like under thrust models. And the CO2? Fuel exhaust, say the bold. Avi Loeb, Harvard's controversy magnet, fans flames with a July paper. Is 3i slash ATLAS alien technology? Co authors float it as possibility. Six on his scale, where engineered quirks, rhythm, purity, tease design sans proof. Interviews follow, it's a possibility, Loeb tells outlets. Urging probes over panic, buzz explodes, YouTube racks, spaceship inbound views, tying pulses to Earth's magnetic wobbles, 2025 model updates as reply signal, X lights up with threads, comet or craft, you decide. One viral clip loops Cox's debunk, but speculation thrives. Hidden alloys in spectra, modulated data bursts, NASA claps back in September. Natural comet, no ET fingerprints, just beauty in the bazaar. Experts like Jason Wright call Loeb's take little reason. Fun, but flimsy. Still, the chatter hooks. What if the pulse encodes math, primes in the beats, or syncs with Oumuamua's path? A tag team, no circuits spotted, no alloys gleam, but the what if lingers, fueling fan art and forum deep dives. It's the universe's oldest game, staring at shadows, seeing shapes. Atlas doesn't confirm, it invites. And as it slings past, those whispers might fade or amplify into something we can't ignore. So here we are, months after that first pixel streak, with 3i slash ATLAS still defying the script, CO2 breath, rhythmic warmth, a magnetic morse that shouldn't tick. Brian Cox's words echo, not possible, yet here. We've chased cores and spins to dead ends, glimpsed past ghosts in Umuamua and wow, and navigated the rumor mill where Loeb's maybe clashes with NASA's nah. Each layer peels back more void than solid, but that's the thrill, pushing edges where models crack. This wanderer didn't just visit, it nudged us toward interstellar humility, reminding that between stars, rules bend. As it hurtles out, pulse fading to whisper, one question hangs. If three visitors in a decade rewrite our playbook, how many more lurk, silent until they speak? The sky's not empty, it's eavesdropping on conversations we haven't learned to translate. What do you think it's saying? Drop your take below and hit subscribe for the next Cosmic Curveball. The stars wait for no one.